George Eustace is here with us now, Environment Secretary, of course. I think I'm right in saying you're supporting Grant Shapps. That's right, yes. Do you think he would take part in our debate? Uh, I'm sure he would. I mean, as you know, uh, Grant Shapps has uh, uh, never been shy in terms of coming out on the media rounds, often on difficult days. In fact, one of the reasons I'm supporting him uh, is, firstly, I've uh, seen him in Cabinet over the last two years, and I think he's shown uh, good judgment. I've often been in COBRA meetings with him, and we've had, uh, for instance, issues around the short straits and transport and getting goods into the country. And I think he's always, he's always dealt with what's thrown his way very, very well. But also he's always been willing to go out and uh, back for government on difficult days when we have those uh, difficult times. Uh, I've, I've always done that. He has too. So I'm sure he would take part in that debate, yes. Why him uh, over others? Because, I mean, it's fair to say he's not a front-runner, is he? Well, look, I've always taken the view uh, in leadership uh, campaigns, and I, this is the fourth one that I've seen now, that actually what you should do is uh, decide who you think is the best candidate out of the field. And there are many good, talented candidates. They've all got their strengths. But my view is that Grant Shapps uh, is the best man to become our leader and our Prime Minister at this particular point. He's got cabinet experience over uh, um, several different leaders. He's shown very good judgment, uh, in my view. Uh, he's a very good communicator. He did a stint as party chairman, so he's a good campaigner and we're going to need someone who can campaign as we go into the next uh, next uh, general election. So I just think he's got all of the strengths and the experience that we need at this particular time and that's why I'm backing him. Who else would you fold in behind? Uh, I'm not getting into that. I generally take the view that I pick the candidate that I think should win and I give it my all to help them win. Uh, if something goes wrong along the way, well, then I'll probably, uh, you know, privately decide what to do at that point. But at the moment, uh, we're talking to lots of people. We're getting lots of uh, interest in his campaign. Uh, I think he's only just launched yesterday, uh, but I think he's a very, very strong candidate and I hope that we can get him uh, through to that final runoff uh, for party members. Looks like it's already getting ugly. Well, we tend to get this sort of uh, uh, joshing during any any sort of leadership campaign. As I said, the first one I did was when we got David Cameron elected. It was a little bit similar then, uh, but I... He came through the field, though, didn't he? I mean, he wasn't a front-runner. Uh, that's right. He wasn't a front-runner, and that's why I don't believe um, any MP should sit on their hands and wait to see which way the wind's blowing or declare early because they think someone's going to win and they just want to um, show their support for who they deem to be the probable winner, it's always the right thing to do uh, to make sure that you put your support behind the candidate that you believe in and not be shy of coming out publicly and saying so in the first round. And that's why I'm doing it now for Grant Shapps, because I think he's the best candidate. Uh, I'm not going to sit on my hands and say, well, who might win and who might be in the final round and will he get support? I'm going to get out there and help him get that support because I'm confident he's the right person to do it. Seems a bit unseemly, doesn't it? Twelve. I mean, 11 so far, probably 12, when Priti Patel um, maybe throws her hat into the ring later on today. How are you going to whittle it down? Well, look, it, it is a very wide uh, field. There's no doubt about that. And um, the party does have a process for, for whittling it down. So there will... They, every candidate will need to get, you know, a small number of MPs to get nominated and then... But how many? It used to be eight, I think, wasn't it? I, I think it, it has been 12, well, could be 30 this time. Well, no, it will be for the 1922 committee to decide the rules. I suspect that they will keep uh, the numbers for nominations... Uh, you know, reasonably low, so that everybody gets a chance. So but then, like eight-ish. Well, I don't know. It's not. I'm not on the 1922 no. committee. They'll decide. But but I would. Have but thought actually... I read reports in the paper that it could be up to 30. You don't think it'll be that? Um, well, I, I don't think it should be that because I think actually what they um, what, what everyone deserves is a run at the leadership in the first round. Uh, whether they then have a threshold above which you've got to get in that first round, I think that's a, a different matter. So we might see several candidates locked out in the first round, and then of course the. The exhaustive ballot process, as it's called, where you just keep eliminating uh, the, the final runner and, uh, and their votes get redistributed uh, to the next round, that can be done actually very quickly. You can condense that into a few days if you need to. We do need to. We will need to, um, because I, I think um, it's generally accepted that we should conclude the parliamentary phases of this uh, before summer recess. So that Which is means... a week on Wednesday. Exactly. Over the next couple of weeks, we want to, to get this concluded. And that can absolutely be done uh, through that exhaustive ballot process. You, you can hold several ballots in, in one day if you want to. So the 1922 committee uh, and Sir Graham Brady will obviously be working out what the rules should be. But I absolutely think, yes, it's, uh, it's doable. It's a tight timetable. Uh, it means people have a short period of time to, to make their case. Uh, but I'm here today to make that case for Grant Shapps. OK. Um, 
it does seem with all of the runners and riders that there was an awful lot of pent up frustration as far as this Prime Minister is concerned, all of these people now wanting his job. Why did you stick by him? Look, I didn't campaign uh, for Boris Johnson in the last uh, leadership campaign in 2019. I campaigned, as you might remember, for Michael Gove uh, at that time. Um, and I, I thought I knew all of um, Boris Johnson's strengths and his weaknesses. And when he offered me a place in his government, I've always thought it's really important that when the party makes a decision on a leader, uh, that you all rally round and you pull back together and you work as a team. And that's what I've done. And so I um, worked and showed support for the government, the Conservative government, to deliver our agenda. Indeed, that is what uh, every other cabinet minister also did. Uh, yes, all of them would have had some of the differences with the Prime Minister. All of them would have had things uh, they wanted done slightly differently, but we were all working as a team to deliver for that Conservative manifesto. Sure, but if they hadn't had the nerve, people like Sajid Javid um, and uh, Rishi Sunak, to break ranks, we would still have the Prime Minister in post. Well, I think it was coming to a head because almost certainly uh, the party was heading for another confidence vote in the Prime Minister. Probably would have happened this week and actually probably would have happened even if no one uh, had resigned and he probably would have lost at that point. So I think um, it came uh, to, the, to a point where cabinet members, even those like me who were loyal to him, even Grant Shapps who were loyal to the government and wanted us to hold together, we all realised uh, at that point that the, he just had lost the confidence of the party and then you couldn't carry on. Prime Ministers uh, are not directly elected. It's not a presidential system. Uh, they, they exist and they're there, uh, you know, only while they have the support of Parliament in general and, in particular, of course, uh, the vast majority of MPs on their own benches because Prime Ministers can't get anything done without that. And I think once it was clear that he no longer had that, um, many Cabinet Ministers spoke to him uh, or spoke to his team or spoke to the Chief Whip to say, uh, you know, that, that the time is up, he's going to have to... Uh, resign, and I'm pleased that's what he did. You know, he reflected uh, on that advice that he had from cabinet ministers and chose to step down on his own terms. When will we know who the next prime minister is? Um, it will probably uh, be, I would imagine, sometime in September. Um, the 1922 committee and the Conservative Party will obviously need to announce the, the rules, but there'll be the parliamentary rounds over the next two weeks, so we'll be down to probably just two candidates uh, by the end of next week. And then those two candidates will go out on a series of hustings around the country during August, possibly early September as well. I would imagine at some time, uh, you know, middle of September, perhaps, we'll have a new leader in place. Yeah after they've ripped lumps out of each other. Let's see what happens. Good to talk to you. Well, it's very important that people, you know, we're all colleagues and we're going to have to pull back together and work together. Exactly it's very that. important people, people work sensibly. OK, for now. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.